Rods. In this video, I want to go ahead and talk to you about the kayak fishing rods and reel combinations that I use for inshore fishing, why I use it, and just some of the insight I've learned over the years. Stick with me. Here we go. Ah! I got you now. You almost got me. Aslam Alaika. All right, so to break this down Barney style, my setup usually looks like something like this. Hold on, check it out. Two bait casters, Revo SX on GSX two rods. I chose those two because they're cheap rods that last a long time. They're about unbreakable and they're replaceable. The reels are were good for the money and I thought they would last a long time, which they have. But I've burnt through a lot of stuff with them. Drag washers, pretty hard on them, and they don't always get lubricated properly. For my inshore setup, um, what I usually do is these are my bottom reels for jigging and for cranking, okay? Because one thing about these bait casters is you can really fill the bottom with the braid. You know, your thumb is always in contact with the line, and your hand is touching the, the graphite, and you're able to fill the bottom a lot better than you would with spinning reel. These take a little more practice to get used to and in a kayak a lot of times you will actually hit the water behind you and if you're like me and you have rods behind the kayak like you have a couple of rods in your crate you're probably at some time or another going to catch that rod behind you because you're just mad dog magnet throwing rods throwing lures and you're going to up hooking something behind you big bird's nest now the braking system in this Revo SX has been really spot on and I haven't had too many bad bird's nests. I can usually get them out with pretty much no problem. So my second rod in the setup for, for right now is that I have a midwater runner or a nice slipless crankbait because I usually, right now we're fishing for bull reds. So you could scale this eye down, idea down. So we got one rod for jigging with a nice big curly tail or gulp shrimp or something on bottom with a whatever type of jig head you need to get it down there. I got something running the middle water column for night right now. It's the bombers. You can see this thing has been chewed up and spit out from the bull reds, but this can be bigger or smaller. It's running the nice from the from the bottom of the water column to the middle water column and I can cover that. So the first two rods are just like this. It's got a lot of cranking power. I think it's like a 7.2 to 1 ratio or something crazy. It's pretty fast. I can't quite remember exactly what it is, but it's pretty pretty fast retrieve ratio. It's got a 6 foot 6 rod. Both of these are. So moving right along, my next rod is usually a spinning rod, a nice spinning rod for top water. This one will usually have a top water or something I'm freelining out there, whether it's a white trout or a big top water bait. Um, a lot of times the red fish around here, the bull reds in the winter, well in the late fall, a lot of times you can see them in the light, so we throw a lot of top water for bull reds, which is pretty awesome. You ever seen a 40 inch bull red blow up on a top water plug? That's what I'm talking about. So this has just got 20 pound braid on it. This is a Pin Fierce 3000, Pin Fierce 2 3000. Use it about six months, haven't had any problem. The reason why I'm choosing cheap is because you're going to break stuff and drop stuff when you're kayak fishing or you're gonna roll your kayak and you're gonna lose stuff so don't spend a lot of money on it buddy Greg if you watch that vlog <laughs> lost like five hundred dollars in rod and reels the other day because kayak fishing is a pretty nasty sport and it, but it can be a great sport another thing you're gonna run these up against the pylons and you're gonna scuff them up so don't get fancy pretty rods and the last setup that I usually run is something really light this is just a pin 450 or pin 430 SSG. I think I got it at a yard sale or on clearance years ago with 10 pound braid. This is like usually my sabiki rod or something I'm jigging really light for a small trout, like really light. And if I'm offshore, sabiki rod. Um, allows me to have something to fish for bait, to free line with the other rod, or to drop down and catch some nice little dinner if I have to. Something light, something finesseful. And again, Again, this is a cheap setup, really cheap, and I can lose it without crying. Okay, so there you have it. These are cheap setups that can get you in the game. If I was a new beginner fisherman, I would definitely, without a doubt, just walk down there and probably buy 
I would definitely walk down to Academy and probably buy like three or four of these right here. Just go and get two, three, whatever your budget can allow. Usually two rods for kayak fishing is good because you can have a setup on each and that way you can just grab and throw instead of having to tie knots every time. So you got a couple different setups to where, you know, if you're drifting in the current, you don't have time to look down and tie a knot, you can just grab and throw. So I would probably just go get some spinning rods, uh, 3,000, 2,500, 3,000 series, throw some braid on there and get weird with it. And you're gonna be set up to catch just about anything, just about anything that the inshore will throw at you. Now offshore is a totally different cookie. I'm gonna try to do a video about that later and uh, kind of throw my ins and outs on that. I've got a few of them on this channel. Check those out and they'll give you a good little approach on how to do, how to also do kayak fishing offshore. But for now, um, I have no problem. Go ahead and saying these Fierce Twos are good. No, I'm not sponsored by them. Um, just save you some money. Now, anything that you can afford to lose that'll hold up to a few, a few thousand casts without going bad. And with these rods, I've made way more than that. I've, I'm probably in the, yeah, literal thousands with this this reel right here, and it's still clicking. And look through the videos, and you'll see some of the bull reds I've pulled in with this rod. It's a beast, seriously. But I hope you like this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Yak Motley. Jack Motley Live on Twitter and on Snapchat. It's like JLM232310. Don't forget to comment below because we all learn from each other. And I'll see you guys later. Yeah.